Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing my very first Q&A video and because I feel kind of weird just talking to a camera, I'm also gonna be restringing my guitar while I do it so I have some sort of purpose in my life. I also have lost my string cutters and my string winder. So I'm using just regular scissors, which is quite dangerous and I'm just gonna to have to twist it by hand. So we're gonna be here a while. So our first question from Ida, underscore 97 on Instagram. If you weren't a professional musician, what would you do? Well, I actually wasn't even gonna do music. I wanted to go into forensic science. I'm really into like um, biology and chemistry and all of that sort of stuff. But if you're talking of what I wanted to do when I was like a kid, I actually didn't wanna be a musician. I wanted to be a motocross rider. That was like my dream was to do like flips and stuff on motorbikes. So maybe one day, we'll see. <laughs> This is not a tutorial by any means. I'm actually relatively shit at changing strings. So don't do it like me, because you will probably poke yourself in the eye and kill yourself. I could just unwind them from here, but what fun is that, really? Terry underscore Webster on Instagram asks, five guitar related bucket list things of yours and five non guitar related bucket list things of yours. Guitar related. One would be playing some sort of big stadium or like the O2 or something. That'd be amazing. One would be having like a really successful album that does well on all the charts. I'd also really like to reach a million subscribers on YouTube. I think that'd be amazing. Um, that'd be a real like milestone in my career. I'd love to have a signature guitar with a company, which is like specifically mine that people can buy with like all like the custom inlays and a custom design and everything. And finally, I'd like to do some sort of like course where I go to like different primary schools just to basically encourage young people to play guitar, specifically young girls. And I just sort of go give a talk, maybe give some lessons to like a group and just, yeah, try and inspire them. I think that'd be really, really cool to do something like that. And non-guitar related, I'd like to go on an American road trip. I'd also like to go on some like overnight ghost hunting tour to somewhere like that's meant to be like really haunted, like Eastern State Penitentiary or like the, Waverly Hill Hospital or whatever it's called, somewhere like that. I don't know if I really believe in ghosts, but I'm so interested about like the idea and like the unexplainable things that happen. Like since we moved into this flat, we'd ha we've had some creepy things happen and it doesn't really scare me. It just, it, it just kind of interests me, the whole idea of it and everything. I'd love to visit Chernobyl. I think that would be an amazing experience, a really eye-opening one. I'd like to successfully get my motorbike license as well. I did start doing, um, all my lessons with Harley Davidson. This is like a whole nother video. Let me know if you guys actually want a video on my motorcycle learning journey because it was an experience. And then finally, cheesy one, have a family, have a nice house, kids, dog, all that stuff. I'm just using the um, Ernie Ball instrument polish. Uh, it's like a spray, you just spray it on your guitar and then wipe it off with their um, little rag thing. It just makes it nice and shiny. Kcastell28 on Instagram asks, what do you do to look for inspiration? I listen to like a lot of different songs. I've got like an inspiration playlist on my Spotify. So I'll go for a walk or go to the gym or something, have a listen and whichever song I kind of vibe with, I'll come home and just try and learn the riff. And then I'll basically take that and like adapt it um, to my own thing. And then just try and write a song from that, obviously change it up massively so it doesn't really even sound like the original song anymore. But basically I think just having like a starting place really, really helps. Oh yeah. Now we're shiny. Arm R R R Menzies 2032. You guys have some weird names on Instagram. Ask how long does it take you to learn and put together a shred video? Generally I like to give myself about a week to do it. It takes me about two days to um write it probably about three to five days to actually learn to play it because I write it without actually learning how to play it and then I've got to learn to play it fluently all the way through and then like a day to record and kind of edit. The same person also asks how much are you affected by the negative comments on your YouTube channel? I actually don't get that affected by them. I don't really take them to heart. I feel like if you're putting yourself on the internet you're sort of opening yourself up for that negativity and you have to have a bit of thick skin to be able to take it. Ricard Dito 3303 asks what type of string gauge I use and this is a good Segue, I use Ernie Ball 10s, 10 to 46s, which I love. This is the Paradigm set, which I think are amazing. They're my favorite strings to use at the moment. Der Bazin asks, who are your biggest musical influences? Playing wise, I'd say Joe Satriani was a massive influence on me. 
Joe Bonamassa in terms of bluesy stuff I loved. I listened to a lot of Paul Gilbert. I love some of his arpeggiated stuff. Um, same with like Malmsteen. And also like Slash is a massive influence for me, I think, with um, his solo album that he does, especially his very first solo album. That really, really inspired me. And that's kind of what my next album is gonna be um, based like with lots of different collaborations with other artists and everything. Okay, I actually need to make a bit more progress with my string changing because I'm feeling like I'm taking like a million years. B underscore Sorez says, when you started playing guitar, how many hours did you practice a day? When I started playing guitar, I honestly didn't really have any friends. I didn't really go out. I didn't really get invited to any parties. I was a bit of a loser. So I had a lot of extra time to practice in my room. So I probably practiced about five or six hours basically when I came home from school to when I'd go to bed. Now I don't practice quite so much. Um, but a lot of my practice is done through writing for YouTube videos and writing my own original music and all of that stuff. I struggle to find time to actually practice like exercises and techniques and all of that stuff. So I really need to m make a little bit more time for that. Don't we all? Rapid underscore SG asks, any advice to musicians starting on YouTube? Find a niche, find something that no one else does that you can bring to the uh, community. Like I sort of found the shred version stuff that I really enjoyed doing and that people liked to watch as well, so that I feel like that kind of set me apart. Also, you know, boobs, standard. But yeah, just find something that makes you unique and also just try and be as authentic as possible with people. Don't put on an act or anything because people will see you straight through it. Tokanov.kz asks, why do you not use alternate picking as much as legato? Uh, the honest answer is my alternate picking is just not as good as my legato. It's, it's something I'm working on a lot more. I'm really trying to incorporate a lot more alternate picking runs. Um, into the pieces I write and the pieces I learn. But yeah, legato runs I just find a lot easier to do. They come quite naturally to me. So when I'm on a little bit of a time crunch with YouTube, I just put in a whole bunch of legato runs. Caden underscore plays underscore guitar asks, what was the hardest part about learning guitar? It's about to get deep here, guys, but I'd honestly probably say the mental aspect, aspect like finding the inspiration and motivation to pursue it, especially as a career. Like I almost quit guitar many times before but luckily I've stuck with it and now I you know couldn't be happier but I still struggle with um, motivation a lot and just self-belief a lot feeling like if I'm good enough if I deserve to be where I am and everything like that. Magister Olaf says what are your future dreams and plans? Guitar related definitely to write and release a lot more of my own solo music as I said I'm working on like a big collab album um, inspired by Slash's stuff so I'd love to release that and tour that. Ideally, it would be amazing to do a world tour. I also love YouTube, so just to develop and grow that audience there. Non-guitar related, I want to get a pup. We actually just put a pup, a, a puppy. <laughs> we just put a deposit down on um, a Goburian uh, dog, which is half golden retriever, half husky. So that's going to be with us in January. So a long time to wait, but I'm so excited. And that is consuming most of my future plans at the moment. I literally just spend hours a day watching puppy training videos. It's all I can think about. So that is definitely my number one future plan right now, other than the album and like music work stuff. Gary Davis on Facebook asks, do you find it difficult to be taken seriously as a guitarist because of your looks? Generally, I've been quite lucky with the people I work with in that um, I haven't had any sort of direct contact with anyone that hasn't taken me seriously because of my looks. The annoying part is when like business people do it, when people you actually want to work with um, comment more on my looks than playing. And it has with a few companies that we wanted to work with that we now haven't worked with because they've made comments, not necessarily to my face, but to the people I work with, like my managers and everything. I'm talking about <laughs> from <laughs> They've just been kind of basically, for lack of a better word. Also at gigs, when I'll sort of show up with all my gear, I'll come in with like this diesel head and like this rig and stuff, and there'll be like someone that will come up to me and try to show me how my own rig works. They'll be like, okay, you plug the guitar in here and I'll plug it into your pedal board. I just play it up, I'm like, oh really? Wow, oh, okay, I didn't know. And then I'll whack out like a crazy solo and they're like, ah, maybe she doesn't know what she's doing. Again, like I said, you just have to have a thick skin. You do also kind of need to um, earn your way a little bit more as a female guitarist, like, you know, getting your hands dirty, lugging all the heavy equipment as well with all the guys and just sort of showing that you deserve to be there just as much as them. You're struggling with that, aren't you? I'm not very good at changing strings. Stefan.Roland asks, did you think you would come this far? 
or did you see guitar as more of a hobby and not a career? I think I'm quite lucky that I sort of have the mindset of I know this is going to happen, it's just a case of when and how. So I never really doubted that I would it would be my career. I knew because I didn't know anyone in the music industry, I didn't really know anything about the music industry. So I knew my entry into it wouldn't have been the traditional, I guess, musician entry into the industry. So um, I'm really grateful for like YouTube. I never thought I would have been doing YouTube full time and that's where my money would have come from. I had no idea you could like make a living off YouTube and everything. Froudy underscore Aiden asks, what do you do when you don't feel like picking up a guitar? I used to really like skateboarding a lot, but I haven't done that in a while because I don't have my board in London, which is annoying. I like watching YouTube, like non-music related YouTube. I love Shane Dawson, if any of you guys know him. He's a really good content creator. There's like conspiracy theories and docu-series and stuff. I like seeing friends. <laughs> I feel like I'm in like kindergarten. I'm like, I like this and- I like the I like, color purple. I like purple. I like seeing my friends. I like drawing as well, that's something I love. I think everyone is secretly kind of bad at changing strings. Maybe it's just me. Probably. <laughs> it's hard, they're fiddly! Andrew.itzler asks a very important question. Um, how do I get a girlfriend? Be a lead singer, honestly, if you want to- Be a lead singer, be a yeah, lead singer. With, with a guitar. Be a lead singer who holds a guitar but doesn't really know how to play it, but he looks pretty cool with a guitar. Someone like Nick Jonas is a perfect example. <laughs> So I've had a lot of questions about why I joined TikTok recently as well. I think for me, TikTok is a really, really good way of reaching out and inspiring the younger generation to pick up guitars and play, specifically girls as well. You know, obviously TikTok is mainly a younger platform with all of these viral challenges and stuff. And I think if they see me on there, maybe playing their favorite like Dua Lipa song or doing some sort of viral like dance challenge while playing some crazy solo as well, then they might think like, oh, that's really cool. I want to pick up guitar and play as well. And we'll get ourselves a new generation of little rockers. Do not cut your strings like this. Don't cut them with scissors. Get wire cutters. It's fine. Beautiful. This is a Daddario tuner that I always use. They're really, really good. They're really small. So they're, you can't really tell that they're on your guitar. They have a really bright LED screen. That just went from F to A sharp. I feel like they're very different notes. A, B, C, D. Does anyone else have to sing that alphabet while they tune their guitar? <laughs> and here we have my restrung Kiesel guitar. Again, this was not a tutorial. I don't think I've strung this, restrung this particularly well, but we got that. Here it is. It's got six strings. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this q and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. Who am I kidding? You literally learned nothing. You probably came away dumber than you entered. If you liked this sort of video, let me know down in the comments. Please subscribe and follow me on all my other social medias. Give this video a thumbs up if you want or give it a thumbs down if you thought it was shit. And I hope you guys have a great quarantine and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.